I'm Jeff Williams, and I want to welcome you to the first installment of Take a Closer Look, a new online interview series being produced by the Louisiana State Medical Society. Take a Closer Look is going to feature interviews with healthcare leaders throughout the state and in the community. Earlier today, LSMS's own Greg Waddell sat down with Dr. Larry Ollier from the LSU Health Sciences Center in New Orleans to discuss graduate medical education, the status of the LSU public-private hospital system, and other topics. I hope you enjoy the interview, and as always, thanks for continuing to support the Louisiana State Medical Society. Hello, I'm here today with Dr. Larry Ollier, Chancellor of the LSU Health Sciences Center in New Orleans. Uh, Dr. Ollier, I thank you uh, greatly for taking the time to join us today and talking to the LSMS membership uh, about some of the uh, some of the issues right now facing uh, the LSU and uh, healthcare system and graduate medical education. Happy to be here. I, I think we'll kind of get right down to it. I kind of want to start by talking a little bit about uh, the LSU transformation into this, these public-private partnerships. Uh, for the you know past year now, uh, there's been a lot of uh, somewhat uncertainty around uh, the direction, um, and I kind of want to get uh, get your take on uh, how these public-private partnerships are are going to affect. Um, you know, medical education and, and training our, our physicians of the future. Fairly broad topic. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's see if we can get into this. Uh, let's start back historically. Um, recognize that if we go back uh, three or four decades, the charity hospital system was very different from what it is today. Uh, I trained at the charity hospital system. When I was a, a resident, um, we had 1,500 patients at Charity Hospital in New Orleans. Today we have 150. It's a dramatic decline uh, since that time. And one might ask, well, why, why is that? Part of the reason, I believe, is because of the way in which uh, hospital, public hospitals have been funded in Louisiana. The legislature gives the Charity Hospital system what's called an expenditure authority. In reality, this is a limit on how much can be spent for health care. The only way that an administrator of a hospital can't, doesn't overspend that cap on spending is by reducing the number of beds so that the access is not available. And what's, what we've seen over the last several decades is a progressive decrease in the number of beds available to train our students and residents in the charity system. So what has happened now with the change in the FMAP uh, from the federal government, this whole process of, of, of funding of hospitals has been thrown into disarray because there's a real gap in the amount of money available to do this. The opportunity that we have with a public-private partnership is that the, the private partner actually leases the hospital, pulls it out of the public system, and does away with that absolute cap on what can be spent for health care. So it allows a hospital to have at least the potential to be profitable and to be able to see more patients, more throughput there, which is obviously going to be very good for graduate medical education. If we go back and look at what happened after Katrina, LSU Health Science Center in New Orleans lost seven of our nine teaching hospitals because of the floods in, in New Orleans. We had to move not only our six schools, uh, which we moved to Baton Rouge, but we also had to move residents. Uh, we provide the residents that are the workforce for the public hospital system in the state. We felt we had to stay in Louisiana. Uh, we were very fortunate in that the hospital stepped up to the plate and helped us. They took in our residents, took in our faculty, and took in our students. The, the residency review committee, which oversees residences very, very carefully, very closely, within 24 hours gave us approval to move the residents wherever we thought it would be better for their training. They said they would suspend the work hours, do what you need to do to keep it going. However, they also said, we will be back and check to see how this is working. So we moved into the public hospital system, I mean to the private hospitals uh, around September 1st, of, uh, right after Katrina. In November, the RRCs came in and started looking at all of our programs. And they compared October after Katrina to October the year before. And what was dramatic was there was an overall 20% increase in the case volume that the residents were seeing. Well, wow. This is mainly because of the private sector. When we looked at what happened, just as an example, 
for the surgery residents that were our that were our, our Lady of the Lake, their case volume was up forty percent. This was after one month. Right. So, it, it's a I think a preview of what we expect to see uh, as we move more and more into the private and public partnerships where education becomes a shared responsibility. Uh, you know, as, as doctors get trained, as, as the faculty uh, train the residents, recognize that the residents are also training the residents and they're also training the students. Well, 70% of the doctors practicing in the state trained at LSU, one of the LSU facilities. So they're used to training residents. They did that when they were residents. So it's taking them in, into partnership as well so that they can help with their practices, help train the, their, their future partners. So I think this is a very positive thing for us in the state. So it sounds like it really is gonna set us up to uh, provide much more vibrant and robust medical training. And, and it sounds like a, with a, a lot more stability uh, in the GME program. I think that's a real key. The stability is gonna be an important part of this. You know, all of us who trained there recognized that there was inadequate funding over the years for maintenance of the facilities for purchasing new equipment. What we have now is the opportunity for our students and our residents to have a facility that is always going to be kept up to date because it's in a competitive market. And we'll also find that they'll have the latest equipment available. So they're training in the modern era. This is a real step forward for the, for the residents. And it gives us a, a different system that is sort of maintained at the cutting edge as we move forward in time. Now, uh, we, we just got through the, the match process. Uh, did we see any, any effects of uh, moving into these, into these partnerships uh, on the match? I mean, with some uncertainty, then, then you, you, well, one might think that maybe folks would make some different decisions about well, where they'd like to train. Absolutely, there were tremendous anxieties <clears throat> in the residency programs. As we held town hall meetings with the residents and students, they asked very pointed questions. I remember one specific uh, question from a senior medical student who says, you know, I came here because I wanted to train at LSU. Now we're changing everything, we're being taken over by private hospitals. What would you tell me now about wanting to train here? Should I still want to train here? So my question to him was, why did you come here? You came here because of the faculty that we have. You came here because of the case volume that we have, because we do care for the uninsured, and it's been a good training system. So the faculty is still the same. The patients are still the same. What you have now is a system that is better funded with a lot more stability than you had before. Should you come here? Absolutely. I think you really should come here, now more than ever. And as it turned out, although there was initial anxiety about this, uh, I think we were pretty clear where we were going by the time they had to, you know, had to make the make the uh, the choices, and so uh, almost 60 percent of our graduating students stayed to train here in Louisiana. I think this is a real positive statement for uh, for the state and for what's going on in healthcare education. I think that's really exciting. You know, I'm, I'm, we're certainly eager to see uh, as these public-private partnerships play out. Uh, hopefully, so we can support. Um, you know, making the graduate medical education program as strong as it can be. Well, it's important, obviously, because all of our members of the Louisiana State Medical Society are looking for their new partners, and that's where it's going to come from. That's so correct. That's we correct. look forward to doing that. Let's jump a little bit uh, to the to the current state budget. I mean, o over the years, uh, certainly health care and higher education uh, are always uh, the targets of, uh, of any kind of reductions when, when the state fist doesn't quite come up to uh, to muster. Give me an idea of, uh, over the last few years, uh, budgetarily from this, uh, the medical school's perspective, uh, kind of what the landscape's been and, and where you see that, where you see that, that going in the future. But that's, it's been a difficult situation and it's of concern for the future. Over the last five years, we've uh, had a reduction of over $47 million in our state budget. We've had a, a $16 million increase in unfunded mandates that we have to pay no matter what. We've had an $18 million reduction in uh, health care revenues from our practices, from Medicaid cuts and, and other things like that. So altogether, when we look at the last five years, we've had almost $69 million in budget cuts that have, or, or in net financing cuts that have taken place for us. You know, we've been able to sustain this, but it's not something 
that you can sustain forever if you continue to see more and more budget cuts. We have, we have uh, been working very closely with our very strong faculty who have been very productive. If we go back uh, six or seven years, we were seeing about 30,000 office visits in the private sector. Today we're seeing over 150,000 office visits uh, a year. So that's a dramatic increase in, in that, and it's allowed, again, another increase for our residents to, and students to be uh, having access for patients uh, to, to study. But this is not sustainable. It's, it's something that you can maintain for a while, but you can't go on with continued budget cuts like this. Now, we, we're still uh, viable. We're still going strong. We have not had to um, reduce salaries or anything like that. But there's a there's a an unease that occurs in the medical system when you start to see year after year of budget reductions because remember faculty uh, are looking at competitive prices there's people trying to recruit them to go to Birmingham or Texas or right or Hopkins so we have lost uh, researchers we've lost research grants because they've taken their grants with them and this is this is something that's disappointing to see now, one of the ways that we've been able to uh, to move forward with this is that we have reorganized how we uh, administer the Health Sciences Center. Today, we're still a thousand FTEs or thousand people less than we had before Katrina, and yet all of our schools are at their highest enrollment in our history. We just had our largest uh, graduating class um, in the history of, of the Health Sciences Center. I want to talk a little bit about a program um, which the Medical Society has always uh, heralded as, as a very innovative program, and that's the Rural Track Program. Um, why don't you give folks just kind of a, a short uh, idea of, of what that program does, uh, and, and hopefully we can get uh, some more uh, recognition to the solid work I think uh, the medical school is, is doing with this program. Well, the, the Rural Track uh, <coughs> Program, I think, is a very innovative and very successful program. You know, most states around the country have a shortage of primary care workforce in the rural communities. This is not unique to Louisiana, although we happen to be a very rural state right. and have a significant shortage in, uh, in health care workers there. Uh, a lot of different states have tried special programs to drive people to the, drive doctors to practice in the rural community. What we did, uh, we set up a separate program where after being selected by the same criteria for medical school, if you get into medical school, and you have an idea that you would like to practice in a rural community, we want to foster that. So we set up a program where the first two years of medical school are in New Orleans, just like every student that comes in. But after their basic science years, for those who are committed to go to practice in a rural community, they spend the last two years, their clinical years, uh, based in Lafayette at University Medical Center. And in one day a week, they actually spend a day a week with a private practice physician, a primary care physician in a rural community. This was attractive to them. They got to see what rural practice was like and got to know the people. Uh, and I think it was positive. We still were not getting enough interest in that. Mm -hmm. So we went to the faculty and uh, we, we were taking 180 students a year and suggested to the faculty, what if we took an extra five students, if they committed to practice for at least five years in a rural community, we'll exempt all their tuition from medical school. The faculty said, yeah, we probably won't notice five extra kids in the class, so we did. And we filled up those five spots very quickly. The next year I went back to the faculty and said, didn't really notice those five kids. How about if we go to 10? <laughs> and so we did, and filled those as well. Next year we went up to 15, then we went up to 20, and the fact is that I don't think we have any more room in the classroom to do this, but we were offering up to 20 full tuition exemptions if they agreed to practice in the rural community. This became the most successful program at driving uh, practice into the rural track any, anywhere in the country. So it's been very successful. Unfortunately, what's happening now is that with our continued budget cuts, we can't afford that type of tuition exemption. It just becomes a, a major gap in our funding. Sure. So we've had to reduce what we've been able to do that. Those who are in the program, we've continued to give them tuition exemption. I'm hoping that our 
finances can stabilize to the extent that we could actually continue to fund this and continue to even expand that. That would be a real plus because it is helpful for the state. We've had over 47 uh, doctors who've now finished this track. They've started into practice after they're, after they're finishing their training. We have another 45 in the program today. So we're still hoping to, to move in this direction. Well, we certainly commend you for your leadership in that program. That's, um, uh, I think that is a game changer uh, for the state. And uh, you know, we can't thank you enough for, uh, for putting that together. And, well, this and was the actually put together by, by Kim LeBlanc, who, who, Dr. LeBlanc, who was a private uh, primary care physician, general practitioner uh, before he joined our faculty. And he started this uh, in the early stages of this. It's grown to be a real success. I think so. I, I hope that we can see the, the budget challenges uh, ease up so we can expand that program. And I, and I think that uh, folks uh, need to know that, that these are some of the positive things that uh, the medical school is doing to try and address some of these physician shortages we have in the state. Thank it's you. truly uh, I think we need to do that. Uh, truly a great thing. Uh, we've also talked a little bit about uh, the increased uh, telemedicine aspects to try and, and help uh, access issues in the state. Um, and, and I know that there's been some uh, some work with the with the rural hospital association and other folks to try and expand that. So it, it looks like that that LSU really is you know looking in that mindset of. Uh, I, I think it's a real opportunity for us. Uh, telemedicine today has become much less expensive for the technology than it, than it used to be. So it's much more readily accessible, uh, uh, multiple modalities. LSU has been involved in telemedicine for a long time. We've been doing telemedicine with the prison system for over a decade. And uh, uh, a couple of years ago, we expanded that to have specialty consulta consultations available for the prison system. You know, if you have to take a prisoner um, from Angola or wherever he is and bring him down for a visit to the physician's office, that's an expensive proposition. You need to have 24-7 guards available. You need sure. to have backup. And so it became a very expensive proposition for the prison system. When we started doing the specialty consultations, we would get whatever studies we would need, CT or whatever, at the prison system, uh, and then that would be transferred electronically to us, the history would be transferred. Then we would have a telemedicine consult with the patient. And we found that uh, within a very short period of time, we had reduced transfers by over 30%. Wow, the prison system. There was a dramatic savings for the Huge prison savings. system for the Department of Corrections. And as we looked at this, we noticed that why can't we provide specialty consultation and backup support for our primary care physicians across the rural communities in the state? So we started that. Dr. Hines, as you know, had set this up um, when he was uh, just finishing up his term in the legislature, and they set up this. Uh, telemedicine program with Freeport and some of the northern rural community hospitals. We're now working with him to look at some of the rural community hospitals uh, in the southern part of the state and do similar outreach programs with them. I think ultimately where we'd like to see this go is as we train more nurse practitioners or physician assistants, I think they could take a role, a bigger role in the local communities, in the rural, in the rural communities. Uh, to provide some health care uh, evaluations and be backed up by telemedicine from the faculty uh, at the Health Sciences Center. I think there's a lot of opportunities we can develop as we move forward. Well, Dr. Roy, I can't thank you enough for taking the time today to, uh, to come and talk to us and the membership of the Society about, uh, you know, the LSU Medical School and, and the LSU Health Sciences Service Division uh, and, and where we're going in the future. So. Uh, thank you very much for, for taking the time. Happy to be here and look forward to working with the uh, State Society as we go forward. We always look uh, forward to supporting you. Thank you very much. Thank you.